Thursday morning. It's December 23rd, 2021. I'm Guy McPherson of Nature Bats Last. You can find Nature Bats Last at GuyMcPherson.com. And if you go there, upon release of this video, you will find the story to which I'm referring, the Los Angeles Times. And embedded within that story are links to peer-reviewed articles. The title of the Los Angeles Times story from December 17th, 2021 is Unprecedented Die-Offs, Melting Ice, Climate Change is Wreaking Havoc in the Arctic and Beyond. The headline nails it and implies the relationship between the Arctic and beyond, meaning the rest of the world. Here's the lead. Forces profound and alarming are reshaping the upper reaches of the North Pacific and Arctic Oceans, breaking the food chain that supports billions of creatures and one of the world's most important fisheries. Among the creatures that are being impacted, of course, but unmentioned overtly, is Homo sapiens. In the last five years, scientists have observed animal die-offs of unprecedented size, scope, and duration in the waters of the Beaufort, Chukchi, and Northern Bering Seas, while recording the displacement and disappearance of entire species of fish and ocean-dwelling invertebrates. The ecosystem is critical for resident seals, walruses, and bears, as well as migratory gray whales, birds, sea lions, and numerous other animals. What they don't mention is including humans at the end of that previous sentence. Scientists describe what is going on as less an ecosystem collapse than a brutal regime shift, an event in which many species may disappear. That sounds like bad news because it's really bad news. Further from the article, a team from the Times traveled to Alaska and spoke with dozens of scientists conducting field research in the Bering Sea and High Arctic to better understand these dramatic changes. Their findings suggest that this vast, near-polar ecosystem, stable for thousands of years and resilient to brief but dramatic, string, d dramatic swings in temperature, is undergoing an irreversible transition. This is an important part of the story. This is an irreversible transition. This is not something that we can turn around by reducing emissions, for example. Lorenzo Cianelli, a, a fisheries oceanographer at Oregon State University, referring to a once ice-covered portion of the Bering Sea that has largely disappeared, says, quote, it's like the gates of hell have been opened, end quote. That sounds bad. Since 2019, federal investigators have declared unexplained mortality events for a variety of animals, including gray whales that migrate past California and several species of Arctic seals. They are also examining large die-offs, or wrecks, as avian biologists call them, uh, in dozens of seabird species, including horned puffins, black-legged kittawakis, and shearwaters. At the same time, they are documenting the disappearance of the Cold Pool, a region of the northern Bering, northern Bering Sea that for thousands of years, think about that, for thousands of years, has served as a barrier that protects cold water species such as Arctic cod and snow crab from some subarctic species such as walleye pollock and Pacific cod. In the last five years, many of these Arctic species have almost entirely disappeared from the northern Bering Sea. This is an enormously important story that I believe has not been getting nearly enough attention. Here's a quote from Janet Duffy Anderson from NOAA, quote, Alaska is a bellwether for what other systems can expect. It's really just a beginning. Absolutely. Because what happens in the Arctic is not restricted to the Arctic. It spreads to the rest of the world. What happens in the Arctic is a bellwether for what happens throughout the world, as I've reported numerous times in this space. A 2020 study published in the journal Science, and there's a link to this paper, and so that's why I'm not including that link within the Nature Bats last post at GuyMcPherson.com, because you can find it within this story. A 2020 study published in the journal Science documented a reduction in the ice extent unlike any other in the last 5,500 years. 
Its extent in 2018 and 2019 was 60 to 70 percent lower than the historical average. In the Arctic report card released just this week, and I include a, the, the story includes a link to that paper as well, federal scientists call the region's changes alarming and undeniable. Even for those who would like to deny abrupt, irreversible climate change, it's undeniable. So what has happened to the Arctic fish? Have they just moved north following the cold water? It's not that simple, says Lyle Britt. He is the director of the, excuse me, taking off my glasses here. Lyle Britt is the director of the Resource Assessment and Conservation Engineering Division of the Alaska Fishery Science Center, and he says it's not that simple. The northern Bering Sea is very shallow. When ice is not there to cover it, it warms up quickly and can exceed temperatures detected in the subarctic southern Bering Sea. In other words, this is another indication of the irreversibility of this phenomenon. Lyle Britt is quoted so we don't fully understand all the implications of why the fish are moving in the directions and patterns that they are, but in some places, particularly the places that once harbored cold-loving fish such as Arctic cod and capelin, they're just gone. Gone. Never to be seen again in that region, perhaps in the world. The story continues. Climate scientists worldwide have long warned that as the planet warms, humans and wildlife will become more vulnerable to infectious diseases previously confined to certain locations and environments, and have documented these events in this space repeatedly. That dynamic could be a factor in the massive die-off of birds in the Bering Sea. Experts estimate at least tens of thousands of birds have died there since 2003. The culprit in that particular case was avian cholera, a disease not previously detected in these high latitudes, and one that elsewhere rarely fells seabirds. The bottom line from Rick Toman, the University of Alaska Fairbanks climate scientist, quote, for me it's actually very emotional. And he recalls his elementary school days when he read Jack London's To Build a Fire and other stories from the Arctic. Quote, the environment that he described, the environment that I saw going through National Geographics in the 1970s, that environment doesn't exist anymore, end quote. The Arctic is going away, and what happens to the Arctic doesn't stay in the Arctic. The Arctic is the planetary air conditioner, as I've reported repeatedly in this space. This is exceptionally dire news that, in my opinion, has not been receiving nearly enough attention in the corporate media and beyond. Thank you for paying attention to this channel. You can like, subscribe, click the bell if you want to receive notifications of future videos, and also you can become a member of this channel for as little as 99 cents a month. Mostly though, thanks for watching.